Good morning, everyone. It is an early morning here. The sun is just barely coming up. And I am, yeah, I'm chopping up potatoes because I'm making potato salad. Oops, I just stuck my hand in the water. And the reason that I am making potato salad so early in the morning is because we're going over to Jonathan and Marika's, you know, the one with baby Ben. And uh, my other son is also, and his family are coming. So yeah, um, we're just gonna get together and my husband has a chicken fryer. So we're taking that over there. And uh, my one daughter-in-law had a free turkey in her freezer that she needed to use up. So she's got that prepared. And yeah, we're just going to enjoy some family time together. So that's what I'm doing. And hope you wanna stick around for a little bit of my day. And I'll talk to you in just a bit. Now, one of the reasons that I chose red potatoes is because if you remember when I was canning potatoes, I said I hate peeling potatoes. And red potatoes make a very good potato salad where you don't have to peel the potato. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just chopping them up. And before I turned on my camera, uh, if you notice my computer there is because I was watching some of my favorite YouTube videos while I was gonna do this. And, yep, just putting it in my pan here, and I've got my pan that I can just lift the potatoes out once they're all cooked, making it much easier on me for draining. That's what I'm doing, and when I'm done with this, I'm gonna get out some celery and some onion and some mayonnaise, and I need to boil some eggs, that's right. I better get those on. Well, as you can see behind me, I have my potatoes on. I have my eggs going. And in this bowl, I have cut up my celery and some onions. So yeah, don't know. I'm hoping that this is a big enough bowl, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't know if it's gonna be a big enough bowl for all of those potatoes. But anywho, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Duran Farm. When, as I was getting my eggs out to boil, I thought about Duran Farms because that's where I get my eggs. She sells farm fresh eggs. So, um, about two weeks ago now, we got a message from her saying that Pot of Gold Dairy is closing up shop. Yeah, another family farm is now no more. And so that's where I got my raw milk. So she has been scrambling, trying to find another supplier for milk. And there isn't a whole lot that do raw milk. Now she also sells whole milk and 2% milk and skim milk and chocolate milk. And she sold the eggnog at the at Christmas time that they would make. And so yeah, all that's gone. They have been having some health issues and they are an older couple, so they just realized that they just need to call it quits. And it's breaking their hearts because they're selling off their cows. And if you know anything about family farms, their animals become an important part of their lives. But anyways, um, She's scrambling, trying to find another supplier, and she did find one that is just a little south of here, but they do not use glass bottles. They use plastic, which is, I understand, because just the whole thing of washing and sanitizing bottles can become probably, it probably has its, its own, you know, issues that can complicate matters, especially with state inspections and stuff. So anyways, um, I'm going to be get, able to get my raw milk and everybody's going to still be able to get their milk, but, um, just a little disappointing to have another Pennsylvania dairy farm close up shop because yeah, there's not too many of them left. 
But anyways, yeah, I'm just going to kind of, you know, keep an eye on my potatoes. Don't want to overcook them and get this all together and get it in the fridge to chill. So, you know, just going to add the, chop up the eggs and add the potatoes with some mayonnaise and salt and pepper to this. And yeah, that's all I do. What do you guys do for your potato salad? Do you do anything like special? Because yeah, I'm always in for new recipes and new ideas on what to do with traditional recipes, you know, just to kind of change them up a little bit. Anyways, I will talk to all of you in just a little while. I hope you're having a great day, and yeah. Well, I decided that I was going to put the potatoes into another bowl to at least mix up everything because I knew that it definitely was not going to be able to be mixed up good in that bowl. So, I'm going to go ahead and mix everything up, and yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. Cut up my, my eggs. I always put my eggs in at the last minute so they don't quite break up as much, and then I kind of place a few on top just to make it look a little prettier. Anyways, yeah, let me know how you make your potato salad, and I will talk to all of you in just a little while, but I also thought that I would show you just a few pictures of our time together. devotion we will be reading in Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Today's scripture verse is urging us to take action, to get involved, to build our life on this mercy. We are to sink our roots in this mercy and our new life will flow out with mercy. Chapter 12 of Romans is all about mercy. Show mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Give to the saints. Bless those who persecute you. Weep with those who weep. Associate with the lowly. Repay no one evil for evil. Never avenge yourselves. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. We are to build our lives on mercy and become merciful. We are to study God's word, not only to know what it says, but we are to apply what it is telling us by applying it to our own life. In other words, when we learn the word, we are to live the word. Just as James 1, instructs us to be doers of the word, not hearers only. Otherwise, we are just deceiving ourselves. It is only when we become a doer of the word, we have truly learned the word. Now, in verse 2 of our scripture today, we're told, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. You see, we must be careful not to allow the world to squeeze us into its own mold, not to allow the world to influence the way we think or talk or act. As 1 John 2, 16 tells us, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life 
is not of the Father, but is of the world. We must remember that God's will is better than our own. His will is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, I want you to closely look at what today's verses are and are not saying. It is not telling us we have to get all cleaned up and get our lives straightened out in every way and become perfect before we can offer ourselves to God. It says, I urge you in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. And that is what the Greek word here says, your bodies, not yourselves. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. Bring it with all of its problems, with all the difficulties that you have with it, and with all the temptations, bring it just the way it is. That encourages me greatly because all the other religions that I know of tell us that somehow we have to straighten our lives out first and then offer ourselves to God. But our God, in his mercy and grace, says, you come to me just the way you are. I am the answer to your problems. For that reason, you must start with me. We cannot handle our problems on our own. So don't think that you have to get them all straightened out. Our God says, come to me because I have the answers for your problems. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And I want to close this devotion with two statements from the Apostle Paul. First, his testimony of his own desire in Philippians 1, verse 20, it is my eager expectation and hope that Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. And second, his exhortation to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. In other words, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. We are exhorted to show the worth of Christ by the way we use our body. And it's only through the word of God that we will be transformed. God bless. I hope you enjoyed this devotion. Please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to leave a comment. I love reading your comments, even if you just say hi. And I will talk to you in just a couple of days.